Our next story is about WeWork. But it's not just about one company. It tells you how the changing work culture is impacting businesses and how companies will have to be very agile to adapt and survive in this fast-changing world. Let's tell you about WeWork. It's a company that once wanted to, quote-unquote, elevate the world's consciousness. It was a motto that lacked substance. Perhaps it was a sign. Today, WeWork is struggling to survive. The company is in poor financial shape. The losses are growing. They've released their financials for the second quarter. WeWork has suffered a loss of $397 million. So the company is bleeding money. It is precariously poised. WeWork's management has 12 months to turn things around, else the company could collapse. How did it come to this? On paper, it seemed to have the perfect business model. WeWork runs shared office spaces around the world. As of last year, it was present in more than 700 locations in more than 30 countries. WeWork was started on a simple idea. Just like living in shared accommodation, people would rent an office together. You pay for a space in the same office and share some of the amenities, like the coffee machine or the conference room. WeWork runs the facility, it looks after the maintenance, and it earns the rent. Sounds like a good business model, but it's no longer working for WeWork. In a statement, the company lists three reasons why. Excess supply of real estate, increasing competition, and the larger macroeconomic situation. As costs rise, memberships are going down. The company's stock is taking a beating. On Tuesday, when the numbers came out, the share value fell by 20%. And since the start of 2023, WeWork stock has lost 85% of its value. The management has a turnaround plan. It has two parts. First, it wants to reduce rental costs. Right now, many WeWork spaces are leased out by the company. Now they want to renegotiate the leases and reduce the rent. The second part is a bit more tricky. WeWork wants to hold on to its members, but it's proving to be tough. There was a time when every company needed an office. The pandemic changed that. And since then, people have been working differently. Employees want flexibility. Companies want to cut costs. So they adopt hybrid work if they cannot afford an office. It means they're cutting down an office space. Take the case of the US, the country where WeWork is headquartered. The United States of America, a record number of offices in the U.S. are empty. Let me show you numbers from the first three months of 2023. Office vacancies touched 20%, meaning 20% of all offices in America were empty. In bigger cities like San Francisco, Dallas, and Houston, this number stood at 25%. Fewer workers were showing up. In America's top 10 business districts, office attendance remained below 50%. Here's another estimate. White collar workers spent 28% of their time working from home, 28% of their work days at home. So there is plenty of office space, but not enough takers. As of last month, the US had 1 billion square feet of empty offices. 1 billion square feet. If you stack all these offices together and create one tower, it would be over 500,000 feet tall. That's more than 48,000 floors of office space. Imagine that. If you make such a tower of empty office space in Washington or New York, it will be bigger than the Mount Everest. In Washington, D.C. alone, such a structure would have more than 3,600 floors. In New York, more than 3,700 floors. This is the scale of the problem at hand. This is what we work is up against. It says this oversupply of office space is hurting its business. They could turn it into an opportunity, renegotiate rentals, get more space. But you see, co-working is not just about having the biggest office. It's also about building a culture. WeWork's biggest sales pitch was its community. The people who signed up for membership. They were promised more than space. They were there for the vibe, for the environment. That's the reason so many startups came on board. They bought into the sales pitch that the community would feed off each other. So if a startup needed a graphic designer, for instance, they could probably run into one while getting coffee. But now most of these people are working from home, so the old sales pitch is not working, and this is food for thought for companies on how they must keep adapting.